everyone in this video we are going to discuss about sexually transmitted infections also known as STDs sexually transmitted diseases the sexually transmitted infections STIs include those infections which are predominantly transmitted through sexual contact from an infected partner so it is predominantly transferred through sexual contact from an infected partner Although the transmission of the infection is mostly due to the sexual contact, the other modes of transmission could include the placental, HIV and syphilis can be transmitted through the placenta, by blood transfusion or infected needles. The blood transfusion or the complete blood or the blood products which are contaminated if they are transfused or there are infected needles which are unhygienic they are unsterilized then the hiv hepatitis b or syphilis can be transmitted by inoculation into the infant's mucosa when it passes through the birth canal so during the delivery when the baby is passing if the mucosa is exposed and then the inoculation of the bacteria is happening then it could be a mode of transmission transplacental infection during pregnancy to the fetus resulting in high perinatal morbidity or mortality so via the placenta during the pregnancy it can reach the fetus you can see here by sexual contact blood transfusion of an infected person unsterilized needles containing the blood of an infected person and pregnancy if the woman is suffering from hiv even the baby can suffer the hiv virus can transfer from the placenta to the fetus the important sexually transmitted diseases the disease name and the agent causing it first we'll be dealing with the bacterial diseases gonorrhea caused by neisseria gonorrhea non gonococcal urethritis caused by ct that is chlamydia trachomatis non gonococcal urethritis the lymphogranuloma venerum is also caused by chlamydia trachomatis the non gonococcal urethritis causing uh, the chlamydia trachomatis is of dk0 types whereas the uh, chlamydia trachomatis the l0 types are going to cause the lymphogranuloma venereum the difference in the zero types depending on their uh, zero types they are going to cause the different diseases syphilis caused by trypanosoma pallidum cancroid caused by hemophilus ducreae granuloma inguinal donovani granulomatis non specific vaginitis caused by hemophilus vaginalis and mycoplasma infection by mycoplasma hominis hope the bacterial are clear in this most important you have to remember the gonorrhea caused by neisseria gonorrhea syphilis caused by trypanosoma pallidum lymphogranuloma venereum caused by chlamydia trachomatis cancroid hemophilus ducreae vaginitis caused by hemophilus vaginalis now we move on to the diseases and the agent that is viral transmission the viral diseases such as aids is transmitted by human immunodeficiency virus of type 1 and type 2 aids genital herpes herpes simplex virus hsv herpes simplex virus 2 condyloma acuminata it is caused by hpv virus human papilloma virus genital herpes caused by herpes simplex virus condyloma acuminata caused by human papilloma virus molluscum contagiosum guys you see the viral molluscum contagiosum by hpv human papilloma virus of the strain 16 18 or 31 viral hepatitis pox virus so the viral hepatitis is caused by pox virus cin is caused by hepatitis b and c virus so the viral diseases are clear 
now we move on to the diseases protozoal uh, the diseases and the agent will be protozoa bacterial vaginosis bv it is caused by gardnerella vaginalis trichomonas vaginitis is caused by trichomonas vaginalis it is very easy to remember here they are saying the bacteria is gardnerella vaginosis vaginalis trichomonas vaginitis is caused by trichomonas nitis is caused by vaginalis monolial vaginitis is caused it is a fungal infection it is caused by candida albicans ectoparasites that is scabies the disease scabies is caused by sarcope scabies pediculosis pubis is caused by crab loose that is therus pubis in this most important you have to remember the bacterial vaginosis bv caused by gardnerella vaginalis and trichomonas vaginitis vaginitis caused by trichomonas vaginalis the fungal monolial vaginitis scabies by sarcope scabi hope it is clear now we move on to the gonorrhea the most important one first we'll be dealing in detail about few diseases we'll be starting with gonorrhea then with aids herpes simplex in the further videos in this video in detail about gonorrhea gonorrhea the causative organism is neisseria gonorrhea the neisseria gonorrhea is a gram negative diplococcus the incubation period will be 3 to 7 days guys you can see here it is double diplococci and it is a gram negative bacteria it is causative organism gonorrhea nisseria gonorrhea you have to remember the causative organism will be nisseria gonorrhea and it is gram negative now the site of invasion of this nisseria gonorrhea the principal site will be the columnar and transitional epithelium of the genito urinary tract so they are going to first invade the epithelium epithelial cells of genito urinary tract as such the primary sites of infection are endocervix urethra skinny's gland and bartholin's gland guys the skinny's gland is found on the anterior wall of vagina and bartholin's gland will be found on the posterior wall of the vagina now you can see here in the picture the bartholin's gland they are found in the posterior wall anteriorly there will be skinny's gland then this is the urethra so the principal sites were the endocervix they are endocervix urethra skinny's gland in the anterior vaginal wall and bartholin's gland in the uh, posterior vaginal wall you can see the bartholin's gland urethra here posterior anteriorly there will be skinny's gland and endocervix the organism may be localized in the lower genital tract they produce urethritis acting on the urethra they cause the inflammation of urethra acting on the bartholin's gland they cause the inflammation of the glands and cervicitis on the cervix again inflammation of cervix this other sites of invasion will be oropharynx you can see in the picture oropharynx anorectal region the gonococci can also enter the anorectal region and conjunctiva so we are the blood it can also reach the features in adults the clinical features of acute gonococcal infections are described as local distant or metastatic pid pelvic inflammatory disease the local symptoms will include the urinary symptoms such as dysuria that is painful urination excessive irritant vaginal discharge so the women will have painful urination and excessive vaginal discharges acute unilateral pain and swelling over the labia due to the involvement of bartholin's gland you see that the bartholin glands are situated in the posterior wall of the vagina so there is a swelling of the labia because of the involvement of bartholin's gland 
there may be rectal discomfort also the other things pharyngeal infection intermenstrual bleeding can also be present so the patient with gonorrhea the local symptoms will be at the site of the infection there is urinary problem that is dysuria excessive irritant vaginal discharge unilateral pain and swelling of labia there will be rectal dis- discomfort and also pharyngeal infection and intermenstrual bleeding now we move on to the signs labia may be swollen and it looks inflamed you can see in the picture the lab- right labia minora and the left labia majora the um, labias are swollen and they are inflamed vaginal discharge is mucopurulent it will be mucopurulent containing pus the external urethral meatus and the openings of bartholin's duct look congested you see the bartholin's uh, ducts has been blocked and distended with a large cyst you can see the cyst of the bartholin's gland here it is looking congested on squeezing the urethra and giving pressure on the bartholin's gland the purulent exudate is going to escape out through the opening so what you doing you're skew you're squeezing the urethra and giving a pressure on the bartholin gland when you do this the purulent exudate is coming out through the opening then the bartholin glands may be probably enlarged tender with fluctuation suggestive of formation of abscess so the bartholin's glands are enlarged tender suggesting of abscess formation you can see here bartholin's abscess so what are the signs labia is swollen and inflamed vaginal discharge will be present urethral meatus and the bartholin's gland will be congested then when you squeeze the urethra and give pressure on the bartholin gland the mucopurulent discharge will come out and that uh, suggests that the bartholin's gland is containing an abscess in it the continuation of the signs when you do the speculum examination You, it reveals the congested ecto cervix with a increased mucopurulent cervical secretion escaping out through the external os you see there is a uh, ecto cervix and endo cervix so here the ecto cervix is going to increase uh, will be congested and there is an increased mucopurulent discharge coming out of the cervix through the external os you can see in the picture the mucopurulent discharge and the congested ecto cervix distant or metastatic uh, you know features are there may be features of perihepatitis and septicemia perihepatitis results from the spread of infection to the liver uh, there is a formation of adhesions with the abdominal wall guys uh, perihepatitis also known as feeds you curti syndrome what's happening here is there will be a spread of infection to the liver capsule via the blood the gonococci from the blood will reach the capsule of the liver then it is damaging the capsule and resulting in adhesions you can see the liver is forming adhesions to the peritoneum this is known as perihepatitis and there is also septicemia that is infection of the blood by the bacterial toxins these are the distant or metastatic features there is perihepatitis septicemia is characterized by the low grade fever polyarthralgia so the infection or uh, involvement of many joints there will be pain in many joints polyarthralgia tenosynovitis tenosynovitis means there is an inf- inflammation or infection of the synovium septic arthritis painful infection of the joints from the bacterial toxins perihepatitis we already saw in the previous slide it is also known as fitzhugh curtis syndrome what's happening here there is an inflammation of the liver capsule with the adhesion formation meningitis inflammation of the meningeal layer endocarditis inflammation of the endocardium of the heart and skin rash these are the conditions the metastatic features septicemia which is characterized by fever polyarthritis uh, polyarthralgia tenosynovitis septic arthritis perihepatitis meningitis endocarditis and skin rash these are the distant sites distant clinical features 
Now we move on to the pelvic inflammatory disease PID. The symptoms will be bilateral lower abdominal pain and pelvic pain which is dull in nature and then there is fever, lassitude and headache. Along with the lower abdominal and pelvic pain, the patient will also complain of fever, lethargy and headache. Irregular and excessive vaginal bleeding is usually associated due to the endometritis. So whenever there is endometritis, there is associated vaginal bleeding. Abnormal vaginal discharges which are mucopurulent in nature, you can see the inflammation or infection of the endometrium lining the uterus. There is going to be excessive bleeding, endometritis is found. There is a vaginal discharge which is mucopurulent in nature. Along with that, there is abdominal and pelvic pain. The symptoms, there is nausea and vomiting, dyspareunia, that is painful sexual intercourse, pain and discomfort in the right hypochondrium due to the concomitant perihepatitis, Fitzhugh-Curtis syndrome may occur in cases of acute salpingitis. Guys, we are, here we are discussing about a PID. As a chronic infection of some pelvic inflammatory disease such as salpingitis, there will be, in case of acute salpingitis, there will be Fitzhugh-Curtis syndrome. What's happening here? There will be a pain in the right hypochondrium due to the inflammation of the capsule of the liver causing adhesions. The liver is involved due to the transperitoneal or vascular dissemination of gonococcal infection. So where, from where is this gonococci reaching the liver? It is via the vascular dissemination, via the blood vascular spread. The gonococci is reaching the liver. It is causing perihepatitis or Fitzhugh-Curtis syndrome which we have already discussed and we discussed here as well. You can see the picture here. The capsule of the liver is inflamed. It is causing an addition with the peritoneum resulting in hypochondriac pain. The signs of PID. The temperature is elevated to beyond 38.3 degrees Celsius. The abdominal palpation will reveal the tenderness on both the quadrants of the lower abdomen. So, on abdominal palpation, there will be tenderness on the lower quadrants of abdomen. The liver will be enlarged and tender. Since the gonococci is reaching the liver, the liver is also going to be enlarged and tender. Vaginal examination will reveal the abnormal vaginal discharge which may be mucopurulent or purulent, congested external urethral meatus or the openings of Bartholin's duct through which the pus may be seen escaping out on pressure which we already discussed in the local speculum examination. Again here they are saying the urethral meatus and the Bartholin's ducts will be congested and the mucopurulent discharge will come out through the external loss. Speculum examination will show the congested cervix with a mucopurulent discharge from the canal. You can see the congested cervix with a mucopurulent discharge from its canal. Signs by manual examination it will reveal the bilateral tender necks on fornix palpation. You can see here the vagina, uterus, anterior fornix and the posterior fornix. There is bilateral tenderness of both the fornix during palpation which increases more with the movement of the cervix. There may be thickening or a definite mass felt through the fornix. So through the fornix you can feel a definite mass here. In the signs, what do we see? The fornix, there is tenderness and there is also a definite mass felt through the fornix. The complications of gonorrhea are infertility. Gonorrhea, there is anovulation or oligoovulation making the patient infertile. Ectopic pregnancy due to the tubal damage. Dyspareunia, painful sexual intercourse. Chronic pelvic pain can be present or tubo ovarian mass tubo ovarian mass guys it is an infectious mass of adnexa adnexa is the ovaries and the tubes so what are the complications infertility ectopic pregnancy painful sexual intercourse 
dyspareunia, chronic pelvic pain, and tubo ovarian mass. Prevention. Preventive treatment, what we do is the adequate therapy for gonococcal infection and meticulous follow-up are to be done till the patient is declared cured. So, until the patient is declared to be cured, we need to do the therapy for the gonococcal infection and a very careful and a precise follow-up should be done to treat adequately the male sexual partner simultaneously. So, if the woman is having a gonorrhea, it might be possible that the gonorrhea might, uh, via the sexual contact, it might have uh, transferred through her partner. So, we need to treat the male sexual partner simultaneously to avoid the multiple sexual partners and to use condom till the both sexual partners are free from the disease. So, if both the husband and wife are suffering from gonorrhea, we, we have to recommend them to use condoms till they are free from the disease. This is the preventive treatment we can take. With this, we come to an end of gonorrhea. In the next videos, we'll be discussing about the other important sexually transmitted diseases. If you like my video, hit the like button and subscribe.